Hi, Dr. Kat Vries here with our last video on the heart with a focus on cardiodynamics. Particularly, we're going to take a look at the factors that impact heart rate, and then we're going to summarize everything by reviewing some flow charts in which heart rate and stroke volume are um, discussed in relation to cardiac output. Very, very crucial information that you will need to really understand in order to move on to the next chapter, but also for you to move on to pathophysiology and take care of your patients in the future. Factors that influence heart rate, we refer to as chronotropic factors and chronology, chronology referring to time, chrono, chronotropic factors. And once again, we have positive and negative chronotropic factors. First of all, the innervation of the heart itself is going to impact how how hard how fast the heart can beat we've learned already how parasympathetic fibers can slow down the whole depolarization process and of course that ultimately leads to a slower heart rate and it's the parasympathetic fibers that predominate at rest um, and we we talk about the heart's vagal tone because of course the parasympathetic fibers are present in the vagus nerve, or vagus nerves, I should say, because there are two, that innervate the heart. On the other hand, sympathetic fibers, they release norepinephrine, and they can bind to the uh, receptors on the heart that specialize in the binding of norepinephrine, and more specifically, these are beta-adrenergic receptors. In the heart, interestingly enough, when norepinephrine binds to beta-adrenergic receptors, it increases the heart rate. In most other places of the body, when norepinephrine binds to its beta-adrenergic receptors, we see it decreases the rate of something differently in the heart. This is also why you might see that your patients are put on beta blockers, because beta blocking medication will therefore prevent an increase in heart rate. So your acetylcholine released by the parasympathetic nervous system you can think of as a negative chronotropic factor. Norepinephrine on the other hand is a positive chronotropic factor. And then there are some other factors, chemicals including hormones as well as the electrolytes that can impact our heart rate. Once again, norepinephrine can act as hormones via the adrenal medulla. And then the thyroid hormone called thyroxine can also increase our heart rate. People who suffer from a very low heart rate, and maybe we shouldn't say suffer, many athletes have a very low heart rate. And, the, and so they are said to have bradycardia, slow heart rate. On the other hand, too fast of a heart rate uh, can be referred to as tachycardia. You may have heard about VTAC, for instance. That would mean ventricular tachycardia. Now, aside from all of these different chemicals I just listed, there are other factors that impact heart rate and even stroke volume. Clearly, depending you know, what, what, what gender we are, um, what fitness level we are, how big our heart is, uh, what is our fitness level, how old are we. These are all kinds of things that are going to impact either stroke volume or heart rate. This is a nice summary in the form of a flow chart to um, <clears throat> better uh, process the factors that impact cardiac output and this is something you will have to get used to, you guys, in this class, as well as in pathophysiology. We very much depend on flowcharts to e easily tease apart or put back together the things we have learned. So I'm going to start from the bottom here. Um, <clears throat> in cardiodynamics, in the, the first video on cardiodynamics, you learned what the definition is of cardiac output. It's the amount of blood that the heart pumps out per minute. And it is the product of our heart rate and stroke volume. We then looked at uh, the, the formula for stro stroke volume, which is the difference between the volume of blood 
at the end of relaxation and subtract from that from that end EDV ESV, which is the volume of blood at the end of contraction. And then we looked at the main factors that impact stroke volume, and we especially focused on um, preload, which impacts EDV especially. We also looked at contractility and then afterload, which refers to how much pressure our ventricles must develop in an attempt to overcome the pressure in the, the aorta and pulmonary trunk. And then there's a few additional factors there that you can add. When it comes to heart rate, we primarily focused on um, the autonomic innervation. That is, how does the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system change the heart rate? Uh, the hormones produced especially by the medulla, uh, the med I'm sorry, the adrenal medulla, and even our thyroid gland. And then let's not forget that, once again, fitness level and age can really impact our heart rate. We, we can take the flowchart even further and really focus on uh, especially the factors that impact individual parts of um, stroke volume. So down here, once again, we have cardiac output, which is a product of heart, heart rate and stroke volume. As shown here, stroke volume is the difference for, of ED, between EDV and ESV. EDV being end diastolic volume, ESV being end systolic volume. And diastolic volume is especially impacted by preload. Preload is the amount of stretch fibers of our muscle, heart muscle must experience in response to the amount of blood that trickles into the heart when it's relaxed. Preload, because it stretches the heart muscle, can actually also impact um, how, how much blood is left behind because, of course, it's going to determine how forcefully the fibers can contract. But contractility, the, forcefully, the forcefulness of, of the contraction of the fibers is really what we mean by contractility. And we typically think of that as an extrinsic factor, uh, meaning that there are external factors that are going to dictate how forcefully fibers contract, such as, once again, the neurotransmitters of the autonomic nervous system and hormones, for instance. And of course, medication could as well. Afterload pretty much only influences end systolic volume. It's the pressure that ventricles must generate in order to overcome the pressure of the blood vessels. And of course, that's going to determine how much is blood is left behind in the ventricles. Afterload can also be impacted by vasodilation and vasoconstriction of those major arteries and the vessels that branch off those major arteries. Preload is going to be impacted by how much blood is returned via the veins and how much time there is to fill the heart. For instance, if a person has an innate slow heart rate, there's going to be much more time for the heart to fill with blood. And we've already looked at the remainder, remaining factors here. For our heart rate, of course, can be impacted by hormones from the adrenal gland, even thyroid hormone. We also know that the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system can influence our heart rate. And then we see that the amount of blood that returns to the heart via the atria can either directly or indirectly impact our heart rate because this blood that returns to the atria is going to stretch the atria and in that sense impact our heart rate. So this is a nice summary of all the factors that impact cardiac output via stroke volume and via the heart rate. Make sure you know your formulas. Make sure you know your formulas. This then wraps up the whole heart chapter.